Welcome to a Statecast. I'm Robert Newman. Our goal of the Statecast is to educate and inform you about estate planning and how it can give you and your loved ones peace of mind. Today's topic, pour over wills. What are they and why do we need one? Wills and trusts are two basic legal instruments that people use to pass accounts and property on to their loved ones at the time of their death. Although revocable living trust is often used in place of a will, they are not mutually exclusive. You can have both a will and a trust. In fact, a special kind of will, known as a pour over will, is commonly used alongside a living trust. A pour over will adds peace of mind to your trust based estate plan. If you neglect or forget to transfer any accounts and property into your living trust during your lifetime, or fail to designate the trust or anyone else as a beneficiary at your death, the pour over will ensures that those assets end up in the trust after you die. If you do not set up a pour over will to go along with your living trust, any money or property that does not pass to the trust or other beneficiaries at your death and therefore remain outside the trust at the time of your death could be treated as though you died without a will, and then be subject to probate and then pass to your heirs under the default laws of your estate. So what is a pour over will? If your estate plan is based around a living trust, you are probably familiar with the benefits that a trust provides over a standard will. The primary benefits of using a living trust are avoiding probate, reducing attorney fees, reducing court costs, and providing privacy to you and your loved ones. Ideally, you transfer all of your accounts and property into the living trust while you are still alive by changing ownership from you as an individual to you as a trustee of the living trust or naming the living trust as the beneficiary of items such as life insurance or a retirement account. The trust in effect is a legal entity that is separate from your estate. Your estate is the money and property you own. Since you create the trust while you are alive and you will most likely name yourself as the beneficiary, you will continue to use and, use and enjoy those accounts and properties as you did before creating the trust. But if you do not transfer those accounts and property into the trust, they remain owned by you as an individual and are part of your estate. Without a will, when you pass away, your accounts and property will be distributed according to state law, which could end up being very different from how you would want them to be distributed. A pour over will prevents this from scenario from happening. The pour over will names your living trust as the beneficiary, which allows any money or property still owned by you individually at death to be transferred or poured over into your living trust upon your death. When used in tandem with a living trust, a pour over will acts like a safety net to capture any accounts or property that you forgot or did not have time to place in a trust. So how does a pour over will work? There are four parties involved in a pour over will and the related trust. The first is the testator, the person who creates the will. And, and by the way, if you see the name testatrix, that means the person who created the will identifies with the pronoun she or he, and the testator identifies with the pronoun he or him. Next is the beneficiary. This is the person or entity who receives the accounts and property that are owned solely by the testator when they die. Third is the executor or personal representative. This is the person who carries out the testator's will wishes as stated in the will. And last is the trustee. This person controls the trust, um, trust accounts and property. When you create a pour over will, you, the testator, name a beneficiary. The beneficiary receives any accounts and property that you own solely in your name at your death. This person is usually a trustee of your living trust. They may also serve the triple roles of beneficiary under your will, trustee of your trust, and personal representative. It's very important to note that if the beneficiary and the trustee are the same person, your pour over will must be drafted very carefully. Rever referring to the trustee by name and not as your trust formal trustee could result in your accounts and property passing to them as individuals instead of the trust. You will also name a personal representative of your pour over will. The personal representative is legally responsible for ensuring that your accounts and property end up being owned by the trust per the instructions in the will. If these distinctions are confusing, th think of a chain of command. You're telling your will's personal representative to move your accounts and trust, uh, your accounts and property into the trust at your death. 
from there, the trustee is in charge and controls the distribution of the accounts and property because they are now owned by the trust. Again, the personal representative and the trustee could be the same person, but they, they don't have to be. Um, you can split these roles among different people to create checks and balances in the chain of command so that one individual does not control the entire uh, asset transfer process. Okay, now that you know what a pour over will is and how it, how it works, the question is, does using a pour over will avoid probate? Well, probate is a court supervised proceeding in which the court oversees the transfer of your accounts and property to beneficiaries. Only accounts and property owned solely in your name at your death are subject to probate. Accounts and property in your trust are not subject to probate. Thus, even if a pour over will directs that your accounts and property become trust accounts and trust property, the leftover accounts and property that you, you did not get around to transfer into the trust are in fact subject to probate. In other words, they do not pour over into the trust until after probate wraps up. Unfortunately, this can result in beneficiaries having to wait longer to receive their trust distributions. On the plus side, since the accounts and property that pass through probate on the way to becoming trust accounts and trust property are likely to be of relatively lower value, the estate may qualify for a small estate, which is generally faster in some jurisdictions, simpler and less expensive than standard probate. The threshold value that qualifies for an estate as, a small, as small varies by state and jurisdiction. Some states also allow smaller states to skip the probate process altogether. Trust should be updated regularly to reflect changing circumstances. But personal accounts and property might remain outside of the trust for a variety of different reasons, which we will talk in another time. Remember, a pour over will is a valuable addition to a living trust because it acts as a safety device to protect your wishes and your beneficiaries. I hope you learned something new today. As always, if you want additional information or to discuss your own estate plan, call us at 301-892-2713. That's 301-892-2713. Or you can reach us at our website, www.estatecast.com. That's www.estatecast.com. We know that life is precarious. Our goal is to give you peace of mind and help you live with your bags packed. We never know what tomorrow may bring, so let's get prepared.